Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I am Noelle and we are going to make a ball gown. <laughs> this week we're going to make a ball gown bodice, hopefully pretty quickly. I might save decoration for later, but I only have three weeks to make a ball gown. So I have a ball to go to in three weeks. I've known about this ball for a year. <laughs> did I make a gown for it? No, no I did not. <laughs> So, um, luckily I have the skirt already. I just need to kind of put a new hem into this black skirt I own. So I think that's almost done. Which means I have three weeks to make a bodice and an overskirt for this. And then I think everything else is like kind of getting taken care of. So I'm not too stressed out, but I do need to get working. So this week we are going to try to make this pattern, which is Truly Victorian TV 490. I am going to say this one time on this channel so that I can get it out of my system and then we're not going to talk about it anymore. I don't recommend Truly Victorian anymore. I morally object to a lot of the stances that the person who owns the company has in life. <laughs> Let me just, like, politically, emotionally, human to humanly, not my jam. Don't, don't think her stance on things is good. However, I own her entire pattern line because they fit me so well. And I did not find that out until after I bought those patterns. So it would be foolish of me to waste literally thousands of dollars and not use these patterns. So I am going to do that. However, for me to you, I do not recommend you use her patterns. What I will say is that Victorian ball gown bodice patterns almost don't exist. Like there's not very many of them. There's some in these books up here. Francis Grimble has some. I have commentary. I've spent the last week trying to make one of those. It didn't work out. And I'll tell you why at some other point. Hopefully I will get that ball gown and bodice together and show you that video because it's almost, you know, filmed. <laughs> However, other than Truly Victorian, there's not many that, that are going to work. And even this one is slightly not what I want. Like I would like a pointed down collar. I would like this to possibly be longer, but I got to try it. So, uh, we're just going to go ahead and make a mock-up of this and see what it looks like and see what changes we need to make to this pattern. Okay, this is the, the main board. We need a bodice. We need a skirt, which is pretty much done. I just need to put the hem on. And we need an overskirt. Cool. This is going to happen. I have a plan. I have fabric. I'm ready. Here's a task list for this week. We're going to cut out the pattern. We're going to cut out muslin. We're going to sew this mock-up. We're going to fit the mock-up. We're going to make pattern adjustments, we're going to cut our fabric, and we're going to sew our bodice. And that sounds like enough to be getting on with for right now. Interested parties might want to know that I am going to use this red diamond spotted fabric that has become a legend on this channel for me making a skirt and not a jacket to go with it. And everybody was mad about it. <laughs> like, I got so many DMs about this, that, like, when are you going to finish that? And I'm just like, I don't really like that skirt. <laughs> I didn't love it. So what I think I might do though is, god this lighting's really bad. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, what I think I might do though is make this overskirt and like ball gown bodice and then also <laughs> make a day jacket to go with the skirt and overskirt combo so that I can wear this regularly. I don't go to balls very often, let alone Victorian balls. So like, eh, but <laughs> I could use this again um, as a day dress, which would be super fun. Um, and I know a certain one of my masters that has a hat that would go exactly with that, and I am ready to wear that hat. So there might be a day bodice in the future to go with this red spotty thing. Like I'm going to make like a jackety one, I think, or maybe like a visiting but I don't know. We'll figure that out later. That's that's for later, Noel, after March 25th, Noel. <laughs> so for now, I'm going to go ahead and get started getting all this stuff cut.
Okay, so here we have a ball gown bodice on me. I changed it from a back closing to a front closing. You may have seen that in the previous clip where I was cutting it out because I added half an inch to the front and took out a half an inch from the back because that's where the buttons are gonna go. Half an inch on each panel, sorry, so that's a, actually a full inch. The fit is really good. I like it. I'm happy with this curve. I am happy even with the point, which I didn't know if I would be or not. I could make it longer. It would be fine to add an inch to the bottom of this, so I'm considering doing that. The thing that mostly I want to do is make this a V-shaped opening in the neck, which is easy to do, so I'm just going to take a pen and mark like where my corset stops, because I want it to stop so that I don't have to hide my corset. <laughs> Other than that, like it fits really good. Okay, I have modified the pattern. I have put an inch on the bottom of either of these. I will, either, both, hi, I can use English. Uh, I will gladly add things to patterns, but I will never cut a pattern. Like, I won't cut away a pattern because I might want that pattern someday. So I remade these two. Um, this one got elongated, the strap shortened, and then um, the back, center back a half an inch taken out. This one got the center back half an inch taken in. I elongated this. I had to do a little manipulation of the placement of this because the darts had to maintain themselves. I shortened the strap and then I trued it up with that strap because that strap ends up making it wider there. So then I sort of redraw this curve and then I made this guy pointy. I think that's all I did. But anyway, I have remade this pattern so that hopefully it is good now. A smart human would make another mock-up. Am I gonna do that? I don't really feel like that that's gonna happen. <laughs> so um, now I have to cut fashion fabric lining and inner lining. I gotta figure out if I want to line it or if I just want to inner line it and then move on with my existence. <laughs> and if I'm gonna inner line it, what I'm gonna inner line it with. <sighs> Part of me just wants to inner line it with taffeta. I could also put some organza in there to make it even stiffer. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna think about this for a little while before I cut. I need to grommet my corset because right now it has the grommet strips, the like lacing strips in there. I need to actually grommet it so I added that to this. I also put the red day bodice on the list. I kind of think that should go on this list but eh, it's here for right now and I'll move it later when I have to. So I also wanted to point out that on the back of the instructions, uh, if I'm going to make major modifications and like make new pattern pieces, I try and write down what happened so that later I know what it is, it is I did to this situation over here instead of using that and why. And also as I am figuring out what I need to do, I write it down here largely so that I can remember to do it. On, on this pattern piece over here, <laughs> but um, it's very helpful later to be like, uh, what did I do to this? Like, why did I make a new pattern piece? I write it down. It's a good place to put it. It's just a pro tip. Okay, we are back in the workroom the next day, and I am still not sure how many layers I'm going to cut out here. I think what I'm going to do is uh, cut out the red fabric and then I'm also going to cut out some black silk because that would be the lining slash interlining no matter what and then I might do a little demo piece where I put a piece of silk organza in between them. The instructions want you to use something heavy like cotton twill or denim or broadcloth and I do have some of that that's black it would be perfect for it but like I think that's a lot. Also, every extant garment I have ever seen, and I called up and checked with Abby to make sure hers are the same way, um, they don't have a lining. <laughs> like, it's just not there. I mean, they have a lining, but it's the same as the, it's the interlining. Like, that is the lining. <laughs> There's no, like, bag lined. Like, there are ones that are bag lined out, but those are, like, fancy. Like, I paid a lot of money to to do this kind of dresses and like yeah I could bagline mine and I might I might bagline it but I haven't decided yet I think I might just leave it open um it also makes the piping kind of easier because you just sort of attach it and then fold it and then use a piece of like bias tape around the edge 
to hold everything down. So I might do it that way because <laughs> that sounds fun and like less work. Um, actually, maybe not less work because I think I think you have to like hand sew that bias strip in. We'll see. Anyway, I am thinking about piping this. I'm thinking I'm thinking about piping it in black. So we're gonna check that out. I have made adjustments to the list, which is what I just looked at. So I am gonna share those adjustments to you. Alrighty. So this was our task list of as of yesterday, and uh, we got a bunch of stuff done. So I need to cut the fashion fabric and the inner lining, possibly another inner lining, essentially, right? So I'm maybe. Um, I'm gonna, I need to flat line the bodice pieces because that is how you lined it. Uh, and then sew the bodice, bone the bodice, make buttons, make button holes, sew the buttons, and do all the finishing work. So this is not like a small task here, and I do kind of want to get it done ASAP. Like I'm speed running this as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> I haven't put piping on here, so I also need to add piping, which I guess maybe I'm gonna put before, maybe, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna put it in here somewhere. <laughs> it goes at the bottom area, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the cutting portion now so I can get that done and out of the way. I, my goal for today is to get all the fabric that I need to get cut, cut. I also would love it if I could get the bodice sewn together and maybe figure out the boning, even if I can't do all the boning today. The boning's all gonna get catch stitched in there and that's gonna take me forever because I am slow at that. But maybe I'll get faster, we'll see. Alrighty, we have two samples here that I have made that are like a, a decent size so I can see what the hand is like on them. So this is just one layer of each um, backing, so it does feel pretty sturdy, like it feels okay. This guy though has the silk organza inside of it and it definitely, like, definitely feels more, 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 but not heavy which I like. So I hate this because I don't really want to have to cut another set of this stuff and I might have to cut it individually because I don't know if that silk organza can get folded in half, although I'm certainly going to try. So I think I need to cut another layer and then I will flatline them all together, which inevitably will be a nightmare. Like I, <laughs> flatlining is, sucks because there's always some like bubble situation going on. I counter the bubbles largely by sewing all the edges completely separately like I don't like stop and turn you can see that like I go off the edge here on each one of them and then um, definitely like as as I get more I start you know trying to push bubbles out and then pin it I'm gonna go ahead and do this I don't like this answer but it is the answer all right we're gonna cross that off and call it those three layers next step is to flatline all the bodice pieces all right so it's just gonna go red silk red silk organza. It looks like this. It's more of a raspberry color than my my actual fabric is, uh, but it's fine because it's gonna not be visible literally anywhere. <laughs> um, and then black fabric on top of that and I'm just gonna sit here and make sandwiches and flatline for the rest of the evening probably. <laughs> Fun times. Okay, so this is what they look like. Do they have bubbles? Yes. Am I over it? Yes. <laughs> what I do for these is like I never like pivot. I do this whole thing cut off. Do this whole thing cut off. Do this whole thing cut off. And I do it until there's like just the bottom and that's open and then I iron it one more time, pin it one more time, and then do the bottom and this is probably as good as I can get it. But it's also like silk and it's shot silk so <laughs> it shows every bubble. It's fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be on me. It's going to be boned. It's going to be fine. So I am taking my time to press every seam. I am not pinning more than one seam at a time. I'm trying to make sure that this gets done really well and with patience. All seams get clipped on the inside. I press them closed first and then open on the inside, clipping seams as I go. And then flip it and press them on the outside. And we are, this is the back center, and this is the side back, and I have to add the other side back here. Um, but we are carrying on very well, and so far it's going delightfully. Trying to, you know, use best practices where I can. I am putting the darts in the front, and I just wanted to show you that I got this kind of ham. 
which if you have one of those corset making hams you could also probably use that but this is delightful for laying the tip of your dart over and like just getting that nice and stretched so that you can press it so it doesn't have weird like sun rays coming out of it which mine always do so I was really excited when I was like oh hey I have that thing I should use that excitement okay now we have pieces together totally sewn insides look good so far very happy with how they're turning out so now it's time for a little break and then we're gonna try it on because now is the time for the try on not after we get the bones in because once the bones are in that's it it's together <laughs> So I'll be right back with my corset and this on just to make sure everything is still cool here and the all the pattern adjustments worked out because didn't do that second mock-up and uh, <laughs> we will uh, make sure everything's cool and then we'll start boning. Okay this is like rather poorly pinned here but everything's looking good. The length is what I want so I'm feeling good about this. The back is looking good. I don't, I don't have anything to say. I'm ready to start boning. Okay, I'm going to show you a bunch of black stuff, so <laughs> your mileage may vary on whether or not we can see this. I've taken a, a water weenie, um, a uh, spiral steel bone that's 16 inches long, and I'm going to stick it in the curved seam, and then the rest of them are just going to be uh, synthetic whale boning. Um, I have encased this in some black silk taffeta, and I then pinked the edges, as you can see. I just used my zipper foot to make a little case for it. So I'm going to do this with all of them, and then I'm going to catch stitch this right in. And I might catch stitch it over itself, like not up one side and then down the other, just like across itself. I've seen it done, so I'm going to try it. Okay, we are fully boned, which I'm excited about. I've also kind of made a decision that I don't actually want to do piping on this. I don't think it's going to add anything to it. So yeah, I am going to hit buttons and buttonholes tomorrow to get this front join like settled. I think I might be putting a placket in because I think I want more room to make buttonholes than I have. So, yeah, um, the boning went well, but slow. That's okay, I took my time. I feel like they look good, they're in there well. They, I did not do the crossover thing, I just went up and down the sides. Probably can't see that, but anyway, that's what's happening. And getting ready for buttons. Okay, what I have here is my little sample I made of exactly how my fabric is for the bodice and I started marking out where the buttonholes would go these are too close like they just ridiculously close they're like at an inch apart right now and they're half an inch buttons so you know it's it's too close it's too dense so I'll probably do an inch and a quarter I think that'll make a better layout um, but I wanted to practice making some buttonholes on here to see how how bad it like if it pulls or whatever on it like the the thing that made me so upset about the train dress is like there's a run for every buttonhole in the fabric because I was using tissue daffoda never again <laughs> okay so I have buttonholes practice they are cut open I have stuck buttons through them they seem to be not causing runs so that's happiness so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and turn over the edges here figure out which side is which and then start marking and creating covered buttons because I have to obviously cover them in order for this whole thing to work out I think I'm just gonna go for it like I could sew in a placket like sew it on this line essentially but it feels okay and like the very edge here where all the pressure is gonna be is actually on both layers of this so that feels good to me I think I think I'm just gonna go for it and I think when I sew the buttons on they'll be like right on the edge too so that it will have six layers of stuff to hold on to so I guess I'm not gonna placket it and I'll just let these hold it yeah um, these are one inch apart 
I don't know. I feel like they're super close together, but I also feel like it's very historically accurate to overuse buttons. And also, this is, like, functional. <laughs> so, like, maybe you want to, like, uh, have more buttons, you know? So, yeah, let's do one inch apart. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and deep dive on that. <laughs> Here we go. buttons coming into focus. All done so. Okay, I need to do a little cleanup work on these, but 15 minutes later we have all the button holes and I need to punch them open and clip all these threads. Okay, we are cleaned up and opened, so I am ready to put buttons on the other side. I'm sort of hesitating on that because I'm wondering if I should do all the other pressing before I stick buttons on. Um, not quite sure. Maybe I'll do some of that. The problem is some of the pressing actually is dependent on the buttons being on, so no, I gotta do that. Because I have to figure out what the crossover is because at this point right here will come back out on the other side, so I have to be able to like trim that off <laughs> so it, so it hides underneath here. Uh, so I need to do that before I turn it up, which means I need to go ahead and put the buttons on now. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. Oh, maybe this is not going to work out? Question mark. <laughs> These are the flowers that I got. Oh, there, that's a better poppies. And there are little poppies. And like kind of see-through poppies. So those will definitely be in another video <laughs> where I'm dealing with decorating the bodice, but uh, I'm also waking, waiting for some silk chiffon to show up, so, because I might do a little, like, floof over my arm instead of just being, like, completely sleeveless, just a little, like, blah, blah, blah. and some of these puppies put on the bodice somewhere, so, but that's for later, but I did want to show them to you. Buttons are on. And now I just have to do the finishing work, which is me turning this up by half an inch and then stitching it down, same there, and then figuring out, probably doing the same uh, around the armholes. I gotta kind of figure those out still just a little bit. I might use bias tape on the armholes, I'm not sure. So I do have some bias tape to use if I want to. I don't think I need to, but maybe, maybe I do, I don't know. So we'll see as I go. There's parts of these that I'll, I'll have to clip out. Um, like this part right here, I probably clip some of that out so that when I fold it up, it's not like 84 layers <laughs> going up, although it's silk, so it's kind of fine. Okay, we are back, and I need to figure out, like, this obviously needs to get clipped off so that these things line up good. Um, they're going to be folded up too. So that kind of makes this problem just like a little bit worse. <laughs> so and maybe it doesn't. Maybe I fold it into it and I don't need to clip it at all. But there's also like all these little things that will need to get clipped off. So the first thing I want to do is figure out if I just want to like fold it over and tack it down. Or if I want to use bias tape, which I have over there. I am reading this Shadow Magic book, by the way. I'm like, can it focus on that? Yeah. It's by Nazri Noor. Um, it's not like amazing <laughs> but it's pretty good so I've got this double fold bias tape that I might use as like a facing essentially so I'm gonna do this on the sample and see how it comes out before I commit and then go ahead and do whatever that is to the bodice okay so I have decided that I mean it looks really nice I will give it that and like from the front it looks really nice like even stuff out it does add some bulk at the bottom so I don't know what I think about that because it'll do that at the top as well. But it is a problem in the area of the button at the bottom because it's exactly an inch from the bottom. And so if I pull it up a half an inch, this would go way above that. <laughs> so I could either add it to the buttonhole or I could fold it down like this. I, if I had to add it to the buttonhole, 
I guess I would just like stitch around it, I guess, and then cut the hole, question mark. Maybe, maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about it. Part of me is just like, just fold it up and stick, you know, stick it down. Um, I did it basically there is one of the places I have already like stitched it down like this. So I don't hate this though. So I might just do this. Okay, so I just punched a hole in here to see if that would be fine. It's fine. The cleanliness aspect of this is very appealing to my heart. So I think I'm going to do this. And yeah, I'm going to attach it to the top edge first because I think that's potentially the harder edge because it turns faster and see how it goes. All right, so we have all the finishing work done with this bias tape binding that I have done, a little facing to, to smooth things out here, which I like. Cool. Um, we're going to stop here and I'm going to do a little fitting to make sure everything's still cool. We still have armholes to deal with. They are not going to happen in this video. They will happen sometime in the future. I also need to decorate um, the bodice. I am still waiting on my silk charmeuse to show up, so like I have a feeling that's going to happen right before I go. So that'll be in a future vlog, but for my purposes, I feel like this bodice is like made it's done so I don't feel like I'm stressed about it anymore so as far as I'm concerned I have a bodice I have a functional bodice that I could take to Chicago and wear <laughs> so we're gonna call that good I will be right back with my corset and this on to see how it looks okay um so it's done it is silk taffeta so any little wrinkle is going to show like this <laughs> but that's okay it doesn't actually like draw that much attention to it in person and also there'll be like flowers on it and stuff when we're done so I'm not too worried about wrinklage um, it fits really well I enjoy its fit it looks good it's doing all the things I want it to do um, it looks loose in the back, but that's just because I don't have a bustle on yet. Okay, so the back fit's really good. This is what I mean about it being loose, but that's just because there's no bustle butt hanging out right here. So that's good. Um, everything back here feels great. Looks good. Yeah, so like any movement <laughs> changes the wrinkles and where they are and what happens to them. Um, but it's cool. I think it'll be absolutely fine. I'm happy with this and ready to move on to the overskirt. Okay, well, that was me making a bustle bodice. I am pretty excited about it. And now that I feel like where it comes to on my waist, I can't believe, like I added an inch to the bottom of it. Man, I could have added a lot more. Like, <laughs> it it goes past my waist, but not by much. So maybe next time I'll make make it like even longer. Uh, if I make another ball gown bodice ever, I don't know if I need to do that, but we'll see. Um, I will deal with the armhole situation later, although they fit pretty good, so I, I'm pretty sure I could just tuck them in and clip them and sew them down or, you know, use the same method that I did for the bias binding. I just need to go get some, so I might go get some and handle that situation. So um, I'm still waiting for the silk chiffon to come in so I can do decorating of this bodice, so we'll just put this down. Um, I'm probably going to hit that black skirt next and hem it real quick so that it's ready to go. Um, and then, I don't know if I'm just going to put a hem in it, if I'm going to put tarlatan in it. I need to like look at it and see what it looks like on. Um, and then I'll, I'll decide and do that. And then we can hit the overskirt. So probably the next video you see will be me working on the overskirt. Alright, uh, as always... Leave me comments, let me know how you are, what's going on with you, what are you listening to, what are you watching. I started watching The Last of Us on Morgan's recommendation. I got some feels about that show. <laughs> it like pulls no punches for sure, but like, and it's definitely like a zombie show. So I I didn't really watch The Walking Dead because there wasn't enough of a body count in the like three episodes I watched. Um, I heard it gets better, <laughs> but so someday I may watch it, but um... Yeah, uh, it's there. There's a body count for sure <laughs> on this show, but more so like just the stories they tell are very like. Ugh. 
I didn't want that person to die. That sucks. <laughs> I am also listening to the novella, the most recent novella of the Dresden Files series. I think it's called The Law. Is that right? I've been avoiding it because um, usually James Marsters reads them for the audiobook, but this time Jim Butcher read it and I I don't know why. <laughs> I'm like, no, I want James. Give him back. So he's like, don't worry, James is going to come back and do more for the regular series. Just this one time I did it. And I'm like, just this one time, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> probably he wasn't available. He was probably doing something else. Anyway, let me know what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're reading, what you're into, what you're working on, what's your projects. Let me know down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That's super helpful. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, ring that bell if you would like to get notified about when I put up videos. Because I'm random. <laughs> I would love to be, like, a person who always put videos up at the exact same time every single week but it doesn't it doesn't seem to work out that way for me anyway uh ring the bell if you want to know okay i'll see you guys next time bye guys waiting for the airplane to go by hi future noel hope your editing is going okay i'm sorry if i'm chaos <laughs>